back right here on the morning after on Sports Grid, and welcome to hour number two of today's TMA live on a Tuesday all across the grid. Sirius XM channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM all across the Spiz Grizz Network. I am Ben Stevens. For a 15th time, Joey Chestnut, your winner of the mustard belt at the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. That's how we begin hour number two. Joey Chestnut, the man known as Jaws, even with an injured leg and on crutches for the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest on Coney Island, the corner of Surf and Stillwell, still takes home the belt. He is the greatest to ever do it, at as inarguable as the GOAT in terms of competitive eating. And over under yesterday at 74 and a half for Joey Chestnut that he stayed under but that was because maybe of a disruption on stage a small protest and Joey Chestnut mid down in glizzies with an injured leg takes down the protester in a chokehold himself Joey Chestnut the man deserves it all and the FanDuel Sportsbook our lovely partners here on the morning after saying due to a brief interference at Nathan's hot dog eating contest we've decided to refund all straight bets on Joey Chestnut to eat over 74 and a half hot dogs last year it was 76 I believe if my math is correct it was 63 this year he was on a great pace and he still gets you that mustard belt and he still gets you a refund in your money due to the FanDuel Sportsbook offering it back, which is great stuff because of that brief interference up on stage there on Coney Island. And you can see the odds that back up the man known as Jaws, a minus 2,400 straight-up favorite to win the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest in his 15th championship. Those odds actually were minus uh, 5,000 earlier yesterday morning maybe after that leg injury and a picture surfacing on social media that those markets tending to move but still does not matter Joey Chestnut again his 15th mustard belt a victory yesterday the Nathan's hot dog eating contest on Coney Island but that's not the only individual sport we check in on with right now we also look at Wimbledon currently going on at the All England Club and Rafael Nadal on to the quarterfinals once again, Rafa looking for that calendar slam. Already won the Aussie Open earlier this year. Of course, domination on clay is what Rafael Nadal, Rafael Nadal does. He won in Paris just a few weeks back as well and advancing to the quarterfinals yesterday. Let's check in on those odds right now live on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Novak Djokovic going down one game to nothing early on in his quarterfinal matchup against Yannick Zinner. Those odds odds are not up and live yet on the FanDuel Sportsbook but when they pop up maybe an opportunity to back Novak who was a heavy favorite here the Joker against Sinner and we'll see what those odds look like but we have seen a change in the market for the men outright odds as you see right there Novak Djokovic yesterday around minus 250 as your heavy odds on favorite to win Wimbledon now struggling early on here in his quarterfinal matchup against Yannick Sinner and he is at plus 125 so the live odds for his quarterfinal match have not been updated but the outright odds in the futures market to win the men's Wimbledon title have been moving Novak Djokovic now plus 190 moving before my very eyes here live on the FanDuel Sportsbook Rafael Nadal the second best price now at plus 200, only a 10 cent difference. And there's Yannick Sinner with the third best price at plus 550. Live updates in tennis as we welcome in our Sports Grid Radio audience here to the second hour of the morning after, live all across the Sports Grid Network and Sirius XM Channel 159. All of our terrestrial radio affiliates now in the mix as well. I am Ben Stevens. Some action on this Tuesday morning on the men's side of things at Wimbledon. Novak Djokovic down one game to nothing against Yannick Sinner in his quarterfinal matchup right now live at the All England Club and the odds to win the outright men's championship are starting to move. Novak Djokovic currently live right now plus 190 still your favorite but only 10 cents ahead of Rafael Nadal who now has the second best price at plus 200. Again yesterday even after Rafa advances to the quarterfinals Novak was still a minus 250 heavy odds on to win the men's Wimbledon championship but now that he's struggling in quarterfinal matchup against Yannick Sinner that uh those odds certainly starting to change 
on the men's side. And we saw a huge change on the women's side over this long holiday weekend as well. The number one player in the world who looked to be as dominant as any we have seen on the women's side here in recent years, Iga Swiatek, goes down on Saturday at Wimbledon. She was your heavy betting favorite for the women's championship at Wimbledon. But now it's Simona Halep as your favorite at plus 175. We also saw Coco Goff get upset over the weekend at Wimbledon. She had the fifth best price entering the tournament, starting to make her way up that board. But she now has an early exit at Wimbledon as well. So some of the names that we know, Iga Swiatek, Coco Goff, of course, Serena Williams in her return to individual competition bounced in that opening round thrilling game against Harmony Tan, that thrilling matchup against Harmony Tan. So, so much changing on the women's side of things at Wimbledon and the men's board currently getting fluctuation as well. One final check to see if we can see a price here on Novak Djokovic. We cannot. Down one set to nothing. Down 5-2 to Yannick Sinner here in the second set. Maybe another upset brewing against that top seed in Novak Djokovic. All right, we come back to talk some National Football League. It's Win Total Tuesday, live here on Sports. might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The Morning After. You kind of got to remember voting on these MVPs, voting on these Cy Young Award winners. It's like the Heisman Trophy. It's not going to come down to, oh, who has the highest OPS? No, it's human beings voting on it. So who's going to be in vogue at the end of the season? Who's going to be being talked about towards, you know, playoff time? So Goldschmidt at the top, he is kind of checking some of those boxes, Ben. The Sports Grid Network. Betting above the rim. Think about what you have just done. You can roll out John Wall, Paul George, Kawhi, and I haven't even talked about Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard and Amir Coffee. Like, what? You could argue that the LA Clippers have the most depth in the NBA and should seriously be considered the biggest threat if KD goes there. Betting above the rim. The early line. News comes out. It was USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten. How could you have two teams on the West Coast playing the Heartland, playing against, you know, in Chicago against Northwestern, or playing Ohio State in Columbus, or going up to Ann Arbor and playing Michigan, or East Lansing with Michigan State? It's going to happen here. Why? Football rules the roost, and money, the almighty dollar, is what matters most here. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Harrell with your Sports News Minute. USFL riveting television on Sunday at 7.30. Tom Benson Memorial Stadium in Canton, Ohio. The Birmingham Stallions and the Philadelphia Stars. It's the championship of the league. Is the league successful by all metrics? Many say yes. About 700,000 viewers on average. Good number. Peaked at that million number a little bit, but also down to 181,000 the last week. Bottom line is they not have to compete with NFL or college. They have to compete with Formula One and other events, especially since Fox is throwing 50 million times three at them. Next year, will they have the dollars to expand into other markets? They're already looking at investors. Philadelphia, for example, playing for the championship. Nobody's seen them in Philadelphia. That has to change. And then finally, XFL, ESPN, other competition for other spring leagues. We'll see how it shakes out.
back right here on the morning after on Sports Grid live on a Tuesday, but not just a Tuesday now in these summer months. It's win total Tuesday as we get ready for the 2022 NFL season. I am Ben Stevens. If it's win total Tuesday, that means Megan Payton is back in the fold as well. You could have seen MP yesterday on your 4th of July holiday hosting in-game live all access alongside Dubs Anderson. MP is everywhere across the grid right now. We thank her for joining us here for another win total Tuesday, MP, to get set for this upcoming National Football League campaign. Ben, thank you so much. It is always fun to be here on Win Total Tuesday and even more exciting after a fun filled weekend. Joey mm. Chestnut, we got to see all the hot dogs and buns eaten. And hey, we were just talking off camera about um, the protester that came in and then, you know, kind of ruined Joey Chestnut's over. I like that FanDuel gave the money back, but uh, of course, always excited to talk NFL with you. Joey Chestnut, the GOAT, when it comes to competitive eating. But Megan Payton, that leads us into this smooth transition, if you will. Who will be the GOAT in the AFC West? A division we expect to be incredibly competitive throughout this NFL campaign. And the odds back up now live on the FanDuel Sportsbook. The Kansas City Chiefs, your favorites to win this division yet again at plus 150. Over a dollar or exactly a dollar in front of two teams tied for the second best price MP at plus 250 the chargers and the broncos the raiders bring up the rear the fourth out of four odds here at plus 700 the longest price in this division right now currently owned by the las vegas raiders so this is where it stacks up right now mp these are how the odds look for winning the afc west divisional crown but we'll go through what the win totals look like that would lead us potentially to a divisional title first your overall thoughts about this division one we have focused on throughout these summer months and one we have reiterated Megan is going to be very very difficult to win this season yeah Ben it, unfortunately it's uh I'm gonna repeat it and we'll be repeating it I think all NFL season this is the best division in the league without a doubt yep. uh the NFC had their years it's now all on the AFC and we can even hone in more just specifically in the AFC West here these four teams are going to be even more competitive than we've seen in the past some major blockbuster moves we know Devontae Adams now with mm -hmm. the Raiders we know Russell Wilson they're in the Broncos I, and you can't ever count out Patrick Mahomes and so I look at this division and and to me I'm always going to be on the side of bet with what's known what's known we know that Patrick Mahomes is one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now so yeah. that makes me think all right Chiefs are going to be secure and I understand you know they lost wide receiver Tyree Kill but their offense is so legit their offensive line is great we still have you know future Hall of Famer tight end Travis Kelsey out there playing fantastic football uh, they drafted wide receiver Sky Moore to me this yeah. the Chiefs are going to be be that secure lock they've won the division six years in a row uh since mm -hmm. Andy Reid has been head coach they've won at least 11 games in seven of nine of his seasons I, I it's hard here Ben because there's so many great teams but I'm always going to base it off the past and right now the past is telling us the Chiefs are the best in this division and the odds are saying that as well I would agree with that statement. You have to blend the past with what we are presently seeing when there's still some unknowns, even having a superstar like Russell Wilson, even the growth we expect out of Justin Herbert and the acquisitions LA made defensively. And for whatever reason, Vegas is getting no love despite the fact they made the postseason a year ago and then got so much better this offseason as well with a new head coach in place, of course, in Josh McDaniels. But... The Kansas City Chiefs need to and are deservingly so your booking favorites in the AFC West at plus 150. As MP said, they have won this division six consecutive years. They have hosted the AFC Championship game four straight seasons inside Arrowhead. Of course, they did not win last year, but they have hosted it four straight years. Their win total, as we'll show you here on win total Tuesday, is at 10 and a half. The even juice on both sides at minus 110 to the over, minus 110 on the under as well. But MP, they've gone over that in four consecutive seasons. They've won at least 12 games, four straight years. They need to be your betting favorites, and you need to at least lean on the side of until they prove me otherwise, I think it's pretty repeatable success in Kansas City. 
Yeah, I completely agree, Ben. And, and, you know, we're going to see a lot of talk about Russell Wilson in Denver. We're, we're seeing a lot of talk about wide receiver Devontae Adams in Las Vegas. But what do we know about the Chiefs? They figure out a way to get it done. How about the fact that they hosted the AFC Championship last year, Ben, and it was still considered a down year for Patrick Mahomes. Yep. It was still considered a, ah, you know, we went 12-5, and five, but this wasn't the best year. That's the kind of team you want to bet on, is a team that makes it to the AFC Championship, a team that hosts the AFC Championship, wins 12 games, it's still a down year. Uh, they were ranked third in offense last year. I, I feel like they really did improve their defense during the offseason. They were ranked 24th so let's find some improvement there. Drafting a cornerback trick, Trent McDuffie, getting a pass rusher there. I think the Chiefs are going to be fine without Tyreek Hill, despite the drama that he may have created. We know Patrick Mahomes gets on that press conference, though, and he's like, all is good here in Kansas City. We wish him the best. Uh, I don't think the Chiefs are going to have any sort of a problem this season. I don't think that offense is going to skip a beat. And that's nothing against Tyreek Hill. I think he should have success with Tua Tungabailoa, who is the most accurate quarterback Tyreek Hill has ever <laughs> reportedly played with. But I just think this offense is going to continue to be in full gear because of the offensive mastermind that is Andy Reid, orchestrated by Eric Bieniemy, And you still have Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback, as MP said, come off a slightly down year you still have Travis Kelsey you bring in Marquez Valdez Scantling as well you bring in Juju Smith Schuster I love the draft pick of Sky Moore in that second round of this past draft and you still have all of those pieces in place we expect a step up in competition level from Miko Hardman as well they have so many weapons at Patrick Mahomes' disposal I think this KC offense is going to be just fine. So that's one known commodity. And I think we give Vegas a little bit of the benefit of the doubt here, at Megan. They were a playoff team a season ago. So the two playoff teams against the two teams that missed the postseason out of the AFC West. We showed you a win total for KC, 10 and a half. Same number for the Broncos. However, the under very, very heavily juiced at minus 160. It seems outlandish to me to post Denver's win total at 10 and a half, but Alas, that is what the FanDuel Sportsbook has done. The Chargers are at 10. The Raiders, a measly 8, but the overjuiced at minus 155. So, MP, you know we like to create our match bets here on the, uh, on the morning after for that win total Tuesday perspective. So, we pair up the playoff teams. KC and Las Vegas from a season ago against the teams that missed the postseason, as we said. Denver and Los Angeles. If you had to take the combination of one of those two groups, MP, to win more football games in 2022. Where are you looking? Ben, I'm looking at the Chiefs and the Raiders. At eight, uh, we've got them listed as their win total, and I think that's a little bit shy. I think the Raiders could go past that. I do think the Chargers are going to have a great season where I think we're, you know, kind of giving a little bit extra love where maybe it doesn't deserve it is to the Denver Broncos, 10 and a half. Yep. I know Russell Wilson is a top-tier quarterback, but... We have to talk about last season for the Seattle Seahawks. Was he in the best offense to maximize his skill sets? Probably not. No, and maybe Denver is going to be a better fit for him. But you look at yeah. how PFF ranked him. He was a top-tier quarterback, you know, I think three years in a row. This year, he's ranked 19th. Yes, he had the finger injury. He had to recover, get back out there. But... I wouldn't say that Russell Wilson's just going to come into Denver and it's going to be a Tom Brady situation where it immediately shifts. I don't see that happening. I do have some faith in the Raiders to at least be in a winning season. I like the Raiders and the Chiefs to beat out the Chargers and the Broncos win total, Ben. I do as well, MP. We'll continue the conversation around the AFC West and what it all means for the AFC Championship odds as well up next here on The Morning App. Pharrell, coast to coast. The PGA Tour Commissioner, not good from him the last couple of months. I mean, okay, we're going to uh, do exactly what Live Golf have done. We're going to have our own eight event mini series next year. $160 million, no cuts, smaller fields, $20 million. That's great, boys. Where, where'd this $160 million come from?
You didn't have it two months ago. We couldn't have used that to sort of grow the game and stop these players jumping ship. Please, I can't entertain it, Scotty. The Sports Grid Network. Betting above the rim. I do think it, it, it's a good fit. Let's see what happens, but are they better than the Warriors? No. Are they better than the Grizzlies? I still don't think so. Denver's going to get back, you know, their two guys, Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. Are they better than them? Probably not. So all you've done is maybe said you're the fourth, the fifth best team in the Western Conference. Betting above the rim. The morning after. You kind of got to remember voting on these MVPs, voting on these Cy Young Award winners. It's like the Heisman Trophy. It's not going to come down to, oh, who has the highest OPS? No, it's human beings voting on it. So who's going to be in vogue at the end of the season? Who's going to be being talked about towards, you know, playoff time? So Goldschmidt at the top, he is kind of checking some of those boxes, Ben. The Sports Grid Network. The Early Line. News comes out, it was USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten. How could you have two teams on the West Coast playing the Heartland, playing against, you know, in Chicago against Northwestern, or playing Ohio State in Columbus, or going up to Ann Arbor and playing Michigan, or East Lansing with Michigan State? It's going to happen here. Why? Football rules the roost, and money, the almighty dollar, is what matters most here. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning Russell after. Wilson. We saw movement in marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, and coast to ABG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game. Take a four and a half. In game four live wins. prime oh, time. The, major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The AFC West is going to be a competitive, but from an odds perspective, slightly confusing division this year in the National Football League. Welcome back to the morning after. It's Win Total Tuesday here on TMA. I am Ben Stevens alongside Megan Payton for a second consecutive segment. And we're focusing right now, MP, on the AFC West. We showed you the win totals for all four teams, 10 and a half for both the Chiefs and the Broncos, the under juiced for Denver, 10 for the Chargers, and then eight only for the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, the Chiefs won the division for a sixth straight year to end out 2021. The Raiders also made the postseason as a wild card team as well. And as we look at those make playoff odds for this upcoming year, MP, the Chiefs have the best odds of any team outside of the Buffalo Bills in the AFC to reach the postseason. Minus 210, greater than a $2 favorite. The Chargers technically are at minus 155 and the Broncos minus 135, but MP, as we showed, LA's win total is actually behind Denver technically based on number alone with the Broncos at 10 and a half and the Bolts only at 10. So you can't necessarily correlate those markets, but that number of 10 is going to be very, very interesting and one of noteworthy comparison, in my opinion, for a number you need to get to as your benchmark, I think, to be an AFC wildcard team this upcoming year. Yeah, Ben, we talk about it all the time. You know, this AFC West division is going to be the most competitive in the NFL. But what does that mean? It means that they're going to have to play each other twice a year. So we want to yep. look at these numbers above 10, uh, 10 game wins. I mean, yes, in theory, that's great. But we're going to see some of these teams beat up on each other. There's no way that they're going to be able to withstand this schedule, you know, and just mathematically it doesn't work out that way uh mm -hmm. i'm honestly looking at the wild card you know sp spots and going well 
are we really going to see all of the AFC West taking over the wild card spots? I'd say probably not, Ben. Unfortunately, this is how the NFL is set up. It's not always the best teams that make it to the playoffs. You win your division, right. and then it's the best records that get you that wild card spot. And when you're competing in a little bit less competitive divisions like the AFC East, maybe AFC North, you're going to yep. see the AFC South, for that matter, of course, you're going to see teams that might not be as strong as a team like the Chargers or a team like the Raiders they might sneak up there just based on schedule alone. It is a great, great point. The Chiefs have the hardest schedule in the NFL. The Raiders have the third hardest schedule in the NFL. Playing each other six times a year, your three divisional opponents twice, is going to harm your ability to get to 10 wins or to go over that win total and potentially then your odds to make the postseason for maybe teams playing in weaker divisions that don't have that hard of a schedule that can stack up wins for their overall straight up record and maybe get to 10 or 11 because I'm not sure 10 is going to be that benchmark you might need to win 11 games and how competitive the AFC is expected to be this upcoming year that's why I don't really get the Broncos at minus 135 favored to make the postseason three of the four teams in this division favored to make the postseason the only team in plus money the Raiders at plus 200 made the playoffs last year so I think there is tons of value on Las Vegas really throughout the marketplace win total or otherwise as we get ready for 2022 but that brings us MP to a bigger conversation about the AFC title odds Buffalo is your favorite at plus 350 we'll get into why that number is where it is in just a couple of moments but again three of the four best odds all from the AFC West the Chiefs at five to one the Chargers and Broncos tied for the third best price at plus 850 it doesn't necessarily make all that much sense to me but I guess if you're going to win the AFC West division and right now the Chiefs are the favorites to do so you would think you're a top two seed maybe top three seed in the playoffs and that path becomes a little bit easier Right, Ben, and, and that's what's hard, I'm guessing, for everyone over at Vandal or any sports book is just trying to figure out how to put these odds up because if you think the Chiefs are going to win the division, which I think so as well, then yeah, you're going to think they're going to make a really strong run for it. They should be yep. right up there with the Bills, I think. But I'm more interested in, you know, you look at the Chargers, you look at the Broncos. I can't believe that the Ravens are up there at plus 950. I don't even know if I think they're going to win the AFC North, let alone get to the the mm -hmm. AFC championship. And so right now it's it's very difficult to break apart this AFC West team right. and not factor in the fact that they have to play six games against each other. But I'd actually say, Ben, the Raiders to me are, are a team that I think can actually do a little bit better than, you know, maybe Vegas is giving them credit for. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the sports books and they're not even on this list right now of a championship odds. Their odds are much longer. Having said that, the Chargers didn't make the postseason last season. The Raiders yep. did. And, and now, granted, the Chargers did do some great things defensively during the offseason. Khalil Mack, uh, J.C. Jackson, those are going to be two fantastic additions for Los Angeles. Having said that, how about wide receiver Devontae Adams, one of the best in the league? You've got him now, and I know a lot of people are not high on uh, quarterback Derek Carr. Having said that, if you put – uh, Devontae Adams out there I can expect it's going to be a lot more competitive than last year they are best friends they are former college teammates at Fresno State they have dreamed of playing with each other mm -hmm. in the NFL and that dream was granted earlier this offseason and it's not just Devontae Hunter Renfro on the other side is as reliable of a wide receiver as you will find in the league Darren Waller is as talented of a tight end as you will find in the league and Josh Jacobs is still a very very good running back the Raiders are 25 to 1 to win the AFC championship I don't know if they are going to do that but the fifth longest odds out of 16 teams in that conference it seems a little bit long and slightly overlooked value on Las Vegas entering the 2022 season but again MP Buffalo is your favorite at plus 350 the numbers seem slightly short in my opinion, in comparison to the Chiefs or some of the other front runners in the AFC. But here is why. Because Buffalo is a minus 180 favorite to win the AFC East. Their win total is the highest of the FanDuel Sportsbook at 11.5. And the over now has all of the juice 
at minus 135. Last week, it was only minus 115. People keep betting the over for the Bills and pushing that juice to minus 135. To win at least 10 games, minus 450. To make the postseason in the AFC, minus 490. The best odds of any team to make the AFC playoffs. The second best odds of any team in the NFL only behind the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that's why they're the favorites, MP, to win the AFC Championship, because as the odds indicate here, nearly a $5 favorite to be within the playoffs in the first place. Yeah, Ben, I'm riding everything with the Bills this season. I'm jumping on the Buffalo bandwagon because I I really feel like uh, quarterback Josh Allen has been absolutely spectacular. And I think most of us can agree that the Buffalo Bills season was cut short last year specifically because of the overtime rules. So much so that it has been changed. And now we will see during playoff games, both teams have an offensive possession uh, during playoff overtimes. And and I think that that's important. And you look at what the Bills have been able to do the past few years. They were not contenders four years ago. Four years ago, we weren't talking about the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen has changed that. We've got Stephon Diggs out there. Now they have Von Miller going to be joining them in uh, Buffalo. I, I really think we can expect to see this over hit. To me, I know it's high. I like where Buffalo stands. And also, their division isn't as competitive. Is it going to be an easy route in the AFC? No matter what, it's going to be difficult. Having said that, I think the AFC West is going to be a lot more competitive. They're going to beat up on each other, and it won't be the exact same for Buffalo in the AFC East right now. Minus 180 for the Buffalo Bills. The best odds of any team to win any division in the AFC. Again, the path is there for Buffalo. Let's quickly go, MP, to the AFC South. The Colts are your odds-on favorites, but at only minus 105. The Titans, who were the top seed in the AFC postseason picture last year, the second best odds to win the AFC South at plus 105. 50. Do you think this will be a two-team race, and would you give the edge to Indy right now? I'd give the edge to Indy, Ben. Um, I, I think it is a two-team race. You know, as much as the Jags were a little bit flashy during the offseason, I don't think that they're there yet, and so I think the odds make sense. Uh, we know the Texans are pretty much an irrelevant team this year, mm-hmm. as we can expect. Having said that, though, I, I do think the Titans are going to struggle with the loss of wide receiver A.J. Brown. To me, the Titans' success solely depends on on the health status of Derrick Henry. Can he stay healthy? Because he is right now the offense for Tennessee. I mean, there is so many rumors right now with quarterback Ryan Tannehill, they might be done with him. So Derrick Henry has to hold it down for them in Tennessee. I feel more confident in the Colts. Am I saying that Matt Ryan is one of the best in the league right now? No, he's not. He is an upgrade though. And when you've got a guy like Jonathan Taylor on your offense, I think you can expect to see Uh, the Colts definitely be a bit competitive. I don't think that they're going to have much to do in the postseason, but I do think Mm -hmm. that they have the edge here in the AFC South. The Indianapolis Colts, the third easiest schedule, according to Warren Sharp's strength of schedule, win total perspective across the entire NFL. And it will be very interesting to see these two teams that are very close in the odds to win the division in the AFC South having the same win total, but very different juices on those numbers. Nine and a half for both Tennessee and Indianapolis, but the Colts over minus 160, the Titans under minus 140. So Indianapolis expected to win 10 games. Tennessee might stay under that win total as the juice indicates. Might we see Malik Willis at some point this year? I don't think so. Not yet in Nashville, but all part of the conversation, MP, around these two teams right now. Megan Payton, all across Sports Grid, literally doing it all for us, bleeds the winning edge. MP, thank you for joining for another Win Total Tuesday. It was a ton of fun. Thank you, Ben. Always so much fun. I I can't wait. We're getting closer and closer. What, two weeks away? Here we go. We're getting very, very close to the start of training camp. Until then, some baseball props from Tom Vecchio up next. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, 
I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Pharrell, coast to coast. It's gotta be young, trainable stars. What about Brandon Ingram in a piece from the Pelicans? How about send those two over, not John, but Brandon Ingram and Herbert Jones and someone else with picks. How about sending that to Brooklyn for Kevin Durant? He can slide right in with Zion. That team is making a move. They're yeah. ready to win. I don't think the Pelicans would be a bad play, honestly. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. One team I do have circled here. It's also AL East. What about this Red Sox team? They got a two and a half kind of, I want to say, quote unquote, comfortable lead in the uh, wild card race, but sitting at 43 and 33, this lineup, Ben, that home field advantage that the Red Sox always have, they're getting better relief pitching as well and from the starters. So watch out for this Red Sox team, plus 1,200, risk 100 to win uh, 1,200 bucks. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. When this is all said and done, Durant will be elsewhere, Kyrie will be elsewhere, Harden will be elsewhere, and they will have one playoff series victory to show for it. And that's not Kyrie's fault. That's not KD's fault either. This organization wanted control back. Here you go. You have it with absolutely nothing, nothing to show, Donnie. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Since April, has there been a better shortstop in fantasy baseball? He has 12 home runs, more than 50 runs driven in, and he's back to stealing bases again. You know, good luck caught up to him, and in May and June, he started to hit the ball better. I imagine Trevor Story will be the guy you thought you were getting with the 25 homers, 250 plus average. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. So you've got LeBron, Westbrook, and Kevin Durant. <laughs> sounds like a sitcom to me. It's, it's a disaster. Like a it's, it's, sounds, it's don't just, sound like a team that's going to win a championship. One basketball I, I and love, rolling cameras, basically, is what that is. Please. Just, like, show I me might buy, I might buy Lakers season tickets if that's a game. The Bostonian versus the book. A good Tuesday slate of Major League Baseball that will break down right now. Live right here on the morning after on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. I am Ben Stevens. It's not a Monday. It's Tuesday following the long holiday weekend. But that still means we start off our week with the proper perspective from FanDuel's Tom Vecchio. Tom, thank you for joining us on this Tuesday morning. I look forward to going through this Major League Baseball slate with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a big slate. There's plenty to get to. I think there are some really, really bad pitchers on tonight's slate, mm -hmm. and that opens up, obviously, a lot of offensive opportunity for plenty of teams. Let's focus on one really good pitcher, making his return for the New York Mets today. Max Scherzer comes back for the Amazons on the road today against the Cincinnati Reds. They're greater than a $2 favorite. On the road against the Reds, one of the worst teams in all of the National League and really all of MLB as well. It's his first start in quite some time, Tom Vecchio, since the month of May. What can we expect out of Max Scherzer and how do we approach maybe betting him and the Mets today? Yeah, so his strikeout prop is sitting at seven and a half with a little bit of plus money on the over. The report for him right now is that he's expected to go about 90 pitches, somewhere around mm -hmm. six innings. You know, if you push that a little bit more just because it's Max Scherzer, we all know uh, he doesn't like being taken out of the game too early. I wouldn't be right. too surprised. Uh, this is kind of the point I'm probably it's it's probably a stay away spot for me. You know, I would yep. want to see him go out there, really rack up the strikeouts. I wouldn't be surprised if he hits the under, still gets to 90, 95 pitches, but hits the under just because he doesn't have everything precisely fine tuned with his, 
you know, strikeout potential, I'd be mostly interested in his following start, whoever that might be against. Once we see that pitch yeah. count up there, once we see the velocity, all those sorts of things. So I think it's kind of a stay away spot for me. Uh, ultimately, if I'm going anywhere in this game, it'd probably be the Mets run line going up against Nick Lodolo for the Reds, who's an exciting young prospect for them. It's just the Mets, the Mets offense in that small ballpark is just it's just so so much offensive potential for that home run uh, ability. So that's where I'd most likely be looking, staying away from Scherzer and the props there. The Mets 44 and 36 covering that run line this year, tied for the fifth best run line record in all of the bigs. I will say this about Cincy, obviously not a great baseball team and the second highest K rate against righties in the last two weeks in all of the majors at nearly 28.4%. I tried to go under on Brandon Woodruff last week in his first start since the month of May against the Rays, who also had the second highest K rate in the last two weeks at that time, thinking he wasn't going to throw that many pitches. He only needed 74, Tom, to record 10 strikeouts against the Rays. I have learned my lesson. It's a stay away spot for me as well. Let's focus on that National League East. The Mets still have a three and a half game lead over the Atlanta Braves, maintaining some of that cushion. The Phillies, eight games back of New York right now, a favorable matchup against a divisional opponent in the Washington Nationals at home in Philadelphia today. What's the approach for this game, Vecchio, in the NL East? That would be going to some of the home run hitters for the Phillies. And that starts off with Kyle Schwarber to hit a home run at plus 215. And Reese Hoskins did a home run at plus 250. Uh, you know, call it a two for one and call it for what you will. I will say overall on tonight's slate, the, the one caveat I'll note uh, across the East, whether it's uh, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Philly, Boston, Baltimore, there's a potential for a lot of rain. It's two varying degrees, but yep. just know going into things tonight, there's some rain across the board. Uh, for the Philly-Washington game, it really shouldn't be too much. So getting to the home run prop, props tonight, they're going up against Paulo Espino for the Nationals, and this year versus right-handed hitters. He's allowing 1.50 home runs per nine. He has a 45% fly ball rate and a 35.2% hard contact rate. Now against lefties, he has a 42% fly ball rate, a 36% hard contact rate, but is only allowing 0.86 home runs per nine. So he has mm. basically the same metrics when it comes to fly ball and hard contact rate, He's but, but he's overproducing or overperforming, I should say, when it comes to the lack of fly balls going uh, for home runs against lefties. So this is where I think he's due for some regression, putting Kyle Schwarber in a great spot. So he's factually bad against righties, which is why I like Hoskins. You could throw Real Muto and Castellanos in there as well, but he should start seeing some regression against lefties, specifically putting Schwarber in a great spot. He's got a 51% fly ball rate, over 300 ISO, and it's much of the same for Reese Hoskins. So it's really all the power hitters for the Phillies tonight. And when you think about Schwarbaum, he's living up to his name once again. 12 home runs in the month of June for Kyle Schwarber. Loves hitting long balls in the month of June for whatever reason. 23 in total this year, tied for the third most in all of Major League Baseball. So we have some good arms on the docket today, Tom, like you mentioned. Also not some great arms as well. Let's focus on those good arms. Scherzer making his return. Sandy Alcantara at home for the Marlins against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. The fish this year with Sandy Alcantara, he has an eight and three record, a sub two ERA. His third complete game of the year, he is an innings eater in his most recent start. They are favored at home today against the Angels, and Sandy Alcantara is the favorite in the National League Cy Young race. But Tom, I asked this question earlier to Donnie Wrightside here on the morning after. If Alcantara and the Marlins aren't really in the playoff picture in the National League, how will that affect his odds, the favorite currently, to win the National League Cy Young? I don't think it should. You know, we've seen DeGrom over the not, – not recently, but over the – what was it, two, three years ago? He won two in a row. Yep. The Mets not making the playoffs. DeGrom finishing with a, a win-loss record with more losses than wins. I think that, you know, we've got to the point with betting, or and I should say the voters, that they know what really accounts for a pitcher being good. DeGrom having – more losses than wins is not an indication of him being good. We, we all saw those stats when Grom was on fire where he's going, you know, 10 straight starts with, you know, three earned runs or a few are allowed. And he's one in nine in those starts because the Mets didn't have the offense. So I don't really think the Marlins potentially not being in the playoff picture would impact uh, Sandy's, you know, Cy Young potential. If he's the best pitcher in the league this year, he deserves the NL Cy Young. So I'm actually really interested in him tonight because the Angels have the worst strikeout rate versus right-handed pitching. I know he didn't have a yep. whole lot in his most recent outing against the Cardinals. Obviously, he was still phenomenal in that start, but 
We've seen him push past 10 strikeouts plenty of times this year. So going to his strikeout prop tonight against the Angels is probably a spot I'll be looking. His third complete game of the year through 117 pitches in that most recent start against the Cardinals, but only had three strikeouts. However, the Angels in the last two weeks, over 30% is that K rate against righties. It's where I'm looking on Sandy as well. All right, let's flip it over to the American League Central. The White Sox and the Twins today, Tom, in Chicago. The White Sox, a minus 126 home favorite as of right now. Not so much about this game, but the White Sox have struggled this year. Five and a half games back of Minnesota for that top spot. Chicago sits in the third spot in the American League Central standing. So when you have a team that is not living up to expectations, Tom, do you still maybe look individually at some of their players who might be able to perform from a prop perspective? Yeah, I think that's where you have to shift it just because baseball can be so random that we're still getting you know plenty of production out of their best players, but overall they may not be winning games. You know, I, I want to say I still have faith in them if they can kind of get things together. If we look at the pitching staff for the Twins and the pitching staff for the Guardians, I don't think it has the same potential that the White Sox do. It's just a matter of them putting it all together all at the same time, which they clearly haven't been able to do. So I'm always looking to Luis Robert for some total base props. I'm always looking to Tim Anderson for some total base props, run props, wherever it might be. And that's really where I'll lean. I'm also going to be probably buying into Lance Lynn going forward on his strikeout props because we know he has that high potential. He also has a very high potential when it comes to overall pitch count where, you know, he doesn't get pulled early. He's going for 95 plus pitches. So as long as he's going to be out there, that strikeout potential is going to be pretty high for him. And so let's keep it in the American League Central. The Cleveland Guardians actually in that second spot in the standings, three and a half back of the Minnesota Twins right now. And as we look at today's slate in the American League Central, a divisional duel between the Guardians on the road in Detroit. Minus 156, that price on Cleveland as your road favorites, Tom. But where are you looking from a prop perspective for this matchup? I'm going to Jose Ramirez to record an RBI sitting at plus 105. He has 63 RBIs this season, which is the fourth most in the league. Yet his last 10 games, he does not have a single RBI. That's right. He has maintained being the fourth best in the league without picking up a single RBI. And he's got phenomenal numbers overall. A 189 WRC plus versus righties. A super low 8.7% strike rate. He does not waste any chances at the plate. Plenty of power with a 328 ISO going up against Drew Hutchinson, who doesn't have a whole lot of innings this year or last year. So if we look at his career, he's allowing a 4.44 XFIP against lefties, 1.31 home runs per nine, and a 38% fly ball rate. So when it comes to J-Ram, we're getting him at plus money for an RBI. I kind of don't care that he doesn't have an RBI in his last 10 games. It could be, you know, no RBIs in the last five games, one game. It's just actually a great matchup for what is ultimately one of the best hitters in the league, and we're getting him at plus money. So 10 games, one game. No games. He could have an active 10-game streak. I'd still be looking at him at plus money tonight. The third highest war wins above replacement at last check in the American League for Jose Ramirez as well from an offensive perspective, having a huge impact on the game. Listen, the skid has to come to an end at some time soon. Maybe it's tonight for the Cleveland Guardians and Jose Ramirez to record that RBI against the Detroit Tigers. Tons of divisional matchups all day long in Major League Baseball, including in the American League East between the Red Sox and the Rays. Where's the focus for that game, Mr. Becchio? That would be with Nick Pavetta, the pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. Uh, over five and a half strikeouts. It's sitting at plus 130. This is one of the games that could be impacted by rain. It shouldn't be too heavy. It could be some on and off showers throughout the game. Shouldn't impact it too much. As you mentioned before, talking about Brandon Woodruff, we see the Rays with a yeah. high strikeout rate overall in the season. It's 25.1% versus right-handed pitching, which is the fourth highest in the league. Uh, Pavetta's having, I want to say, like quietly a really solid season. Uh, 23.6% strikeout rate is what he has overall. Most importantly, he has seven straight starts of 97 pitches or more. Many of those are over 100 pitches. And in some of these recent starts, he's going for 10 and 11 strikeouts. So we have a high strikeout team against a pitcher that is allowed to go deep into the game. He does not have a short leash. He's out there, and he's shown that high ceiling to get to double-digit strikeouts. So over 5.5 is sitting up plus 130. As long as the rain cooperates, I think Pavetta is in a really good spot to pl- uh, probably blow past this, and I'll also be looking to probably 7-plus strikeouts on his alt line as well. When you look at the Rays, they've also gone up in their percentage of strikeouts in the last couple of weeks, certainly in the last month, even from where they are 
overall this year. The second highest K rate against righties in the last month in Major League Baseball at 25.4%. It's a great handicap there, Tom, and that's why I'm looking at Sandy Alcantara as well. You know those guys are going to be in the game for a long haul if they pitch well, and at least this year, both Sandy and Nick have been pretty good on the bump. 117 pitches for Alcantara in his last outing. Sure, it was only three strikeouts against the Cardinals, but the sample size, the amount of volume they will see is a great reason to start with that handicap. Tom, I want to ask you a question we asked the public earlier today. The Yankees versus the field in the American League pennant race. Who are you taking? I mean, from a betting perspective, uh, we see Houston where they plus 220, plus 250-ish, somewhere around yep. there for the, it's probably the best spot to go from a betting perspective. If you really want to get interesting, you would probably look to the Red Sox based yep. on the news that Chris Sale is on his way back and uh, Nathan Eovaldi should also be on his way back. So, you know, them getting healthier in the second half of the season, their offense has really picked up. We, we saw them have a very strong June overall. So those kind right. of factors moving together, I think the Red Sox would probably be the value spot to look in the AL. It almost feels like a two-team race at times early on, the Yanks and the Strohs, but I would keep an eye on Boston as well. 12-1 to 1 in the third best record even currently, Tom, in all of the American League. FanDuel's Tom Vecchio, the prop perspective to start off a new week here on TMA. Tom, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. I go with a strikeout prop as well for my best bet as we round out the show on the morning after up next. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Fantasy Sports Today. Dallas Garcia, I remember him seeing him in spring training, and my gosh, like he has brought Texas back to relevance. He is 16 overall on the player Raider, exactly even with Shohei Otani. He's got power, he's got speed, he's getting great counting stats with RBIs, and he's got a good average. He's hitting 259 as of recording of this. I mean, he's really, he's actually surprisingly excellent for fantasy. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. When this is all said and done, Durant will be elsewhere, Kyrie will be elsewhere, Harden will be elsewhere, and they will have one playoff series victory to show for it. And that's not Kyrie's fault. That's not KD's fault either. This organization wanted control back. Here you go. You have it with absolutely nothing, nothing to show, Donnie. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. One team I do have circled here. It's also AL East. What about this Red Sox team? They got a two and a half kind of, I want to say, quote unquote, comfortable lead in the uh, wild card race. But sitting at 43 and 33, this lineup, Ben, that home field advantage that the Red Sox always have. They're getting better relief pitching as well and from the starters. So watch out for this Red Sox team plus 1,200. Risk 100 to win uh, 1,200 bucks. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. It's got to be young, trainable stars. What about Brandon Ingram in a piece from the Pelicans? How about some those two over, not done, but Brandon Ingram and Herbert Jones and someone else with picks? How about sending that to Brooklyn for Kevin Durant? He can slide right in with Zion. That team is making a move. They're yeah. ready to win. I don't think the Pelicans would be a bad play, honestly. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the Book. By the way, the chat's blowing up. Brogdon, Brogdon to the Celtics. Done? Done. They got Gallinari and Brogdon? Making moves. Beautiful. I love the addition for Boston. Love Making it. moves, son. Brogdon's move. Look at 
my boy Brad is doing stuff. I, I knew he'd be good at this job. Oh, he's the Bostonian. Is the book. Closing out our two hours together here on a Tuesday on the morning after on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. I am Ben Stevens. Thank you for joining us here all across the grid on this Tuesday. And before we end, we look at Major League Baseball. Sandy Alcantara is the favorite to win the National League Cy Young. The Marlins are a favorite today at home against the Angels. The Marlins have won five straight games. So how do we take advantage of the NL Cy Young favorite? How do we look at him on a daily basis from an odds perspective to find the best value? I think we go to the over of his K prop, and we'll discuss that now. So before we say farewell, before we say goodbye, it's time for a Major League Baseball K prop best bet. It is time for bye, bye, bye. All right, I can feel it. I can feel the tide starting to turn now in a new month when it comes to my Major League Baseball best bets. And we start with some plus money. Sandy Alcantara over 7.5 Ks against the Halos. It's plus 122 to the over. You might be thinking, plus money to the over for the NL Cy Young favorite against the Angels, who have the highest K rate against righties all year long at nearly 27%. In the last month, it's 30%. In the last two weeks, it's 30.4%. Why is it plus money? Well, Sandy Alcantara has only gone over this number of seven and a half strikeouts twice this year. And this is for a guy that has three complete games and his eight of his last nine starts. He has thrown at least a hundred or more pitches. Sandy Alcantara is out there. The volume is there for him to go over this K prop of seven and a half. And I love the plus money at plus 122 against Los Angeles today at home. It hasn't happened often, but it doesn't mean it can't happen for Alcantara and the Fish today against the Angels. Over seven and a half strikeouts at plus 122 for the man who is your NL Cy Young favorite in Sandy Alcantara. Thank you for joining us here on this Tuesday on the morning after. It happens each and every weekday live at 9 a.m. Eastern time right here live on the grid. As it will tomorrow on a Wednesday. So enjoy the day of sports. I'm Ben Stevens, and we'll talk tomorrow.